Welcome to the Natural Super Kids Podcast, where you will discover practical strategies to inspire you to boost the health and nutrition of your kids. I'm Jessica Donovan, a qualified naturopath specializing in kids' health, and I want to make it as easy as possible for you to raise healthy and happy kids. Let's get into it. hope your brains are switched on for this episode. This episode's a bit different than our regular episodes. Um, We are deep diving into a very complex area with a highly experienced naturopath. um, And we're talking about MTHFR with Joanne Kennedy, who is, as I said, highly experienced and specializes in MTHFR, methylation and histamine intolerance. And prior to establishing her own practice, Jo worked at MTHFR Support Australia as a naturopath specializing in treating patients with the MTHFR gene mutation and methylation issues. With her knowledge of methylation and other biochemical pathways, Jo has helped hundreds of patients with chronic health issues finally heal. And on today's episode, we are diving into MTHFR. So Jo is explaining what exactly MTHFR is, the gene, the mutation, the enzyme, um, how the MTHFR gene mutation can affect our health. And then we dive into the specifics of children um, and talk a bit about allergies, intolerances, uh, kids on the spectrum, kids with mood disorders. And then we also talk about women's hormones and histamine intolerance. So We do cover lots of different topics, but as I said, it's quite in-depth. I felt like I was back in my biochemistry (laughs) lectures. Um, Joanne obviously knows her stuff. Her knowledge um, really shines through in this episode, Um, and I hope you enjoy it. Hello, Joanne. Welcome to the Natural Super Kids podcast. Hi, Jessica. Thanks so much for having me. It's so nice to be talking to a fellow naturopath. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do and specialize in? Yep. So I'm an, I'm a naturopath and I specialize in MTHFR methylation and histamine intolerance. So what that kind of involves is what other naturopaths do mainly, which is doing diet and lifestyle, treating gut, balancing hormones, looking for nutrient deficiencies that I always have in the back of my mind what are the issues with your gut and your hormones etc impacting how they impacting your methylation pathways and your sulfation pathways so I'm a bit of a biochemistry geek so that's how I kind of look at a patient as holistically as I can so I got into um methylation and MTHFR as soon as I graduated. I worked at MTHFR support for a couple of years where I learned all about methylation and histamine was a really big thing that I was exposed to working at MTHFR support. And when I went out on my own, I really focused in on histamine intolerance because it's so incredibly common. And I did a whole deep dive into all the causes of histamine intolerance, which are many, and I ended up writing an e-book and did a video masterclass on histamine intolerance. So it really is what I specialise in. Um, But day to day, I'm treating guts and I'm working out nutrient deficiencies and stress and sleep and hormones and and everything that other naturopaths do. All that good stuff that our natural that, that us naturopaths yeah. love, yeah, exactly. um, and the area of methylation and MTHFR. It's so interesting. It's so complex. Can you explain what these terms mean to our listeners? Yeah. Okay. So, what I think people need to understand what MTHFR is. It's actually a gene and an enzyme. Right, So we have an MTHFR gene and and that gene provides the code for the MTHFR enzyme to function. So it's the enzyme that we're really interested in because it's the enzyme that is in our body and is impacted by the environment. Okay, Now, you can have a gene mutation on the MTHFR gene whereby you can have a reduction 
in the functioning of that enzyme. And what that enzyme does, it donates a methyl group to folate. And that forms methylfolate. And methylfolate is a really important nutrient we need for a biochemical pathway called methylation. Okay. So when we're looking at MTHFR, we need to think about is there a gene mutation? And we also need to think about folate metabolism, because if you're not eating any folate, if you're not digesting and absorbing your folate, then you're not going to have any methylfolate. So it's not just dependent on a gene, it's it's the environment. Okay. So the interesting thing about um, folate is that it is absorbed through the small bowel greatly. And if you have SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, which is the most common cause of IBS, and a reduction in your pancreatic enzyme functioning, you can have a reduction in your folate levels. Okay. So when we're looking at MTHFR, we're always looking at the environment of each person and not just a gene mutation. Okay. So that, that, that's what MTHFR is. And, and the whole methylation pathway has other enzymes and other nutrients that are required. Okay. So one of the other main nutrients required for methylation is vitamin B12. Okay. And B12, we really need to be eating animal protein and we need to be absorbing it through the gut. We need good hydrochloric acid gut function to absorb it. And the other important nutrient we need for methylation is methionine, which is an amino acid. We also need zinc and B6 and these other nutrients. So we need to be thinking about gut health, intake of these nutrients to be supporting the, what we need to methylate. Okay. And methylation is a process in the body um, whereby you have a methyl group and it goes around the body. And this methyl group attaches to lots of different enzymes. And these enzymes are called methyl transferase enzymes. There's like 200 of them. Okay. And one of the common ones is histamine in methyl transferase enzyme. And that breaks down histamine, particularly in the central nervous system. Okay, the other one is catechol methyltransferase enzyme. That not only breaks down estrogen, which is a common thing that's known by, it also breaks down dopamine. Okay, so when we have high dopamine, we can have irritability and anger, right? So it's it's involved in a lot of processes. It's involved in making cell membranes, which is massive. It's involved in liver detoxification of toxins. So it's 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 a big, big pathway. It's not the only pathway, but it's a it's a really, really important pathway. So we need to make methyl groups, but we also need to think about where you're using your methyl groups. Another thing methylation does is break down adrenaline. Okay. So stress, massive. Okay. So, and the other thing that's going to really hinder these pathways is inflammation because inflammation is going to slow down these enzyme function, right? So we need to take a really good thorough case history of our patients. We need to look at these functional medicine tests that are available. SIBO testing, stool testing, oxalates, organic acids, mold is a big problem. We need to be looking at these functional medicine testing, which is telling us what's happening in real time for what's happening in each individual's body, not 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 just one gene. Yes. 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 And I think that, that I'm really glad that you brought that up because so many people say I've got MTHFR when they really mean I've got an a, a, an MTHFR mutation because we've all yeah. got an MTHFR yeah. gene and That's right. enzymes. Um, but, you know, it really is looking at the bigger picture, isn't it? It's just like it's not that sort of, all right, well, I've got the MTHFR mutation. I've got to do this. Like it's looking at the environment and what's going on for each individual yeah, person. Exactly. It's so, really not a diagnosis of anything on its own. Yes. Yes, I think that's really that's really important. I want people to hear that. Um, so how can the MTHFR gene mutation affect our health? What are some of the ways? Okay, so if you've got a reduction in the functioning of that and issues with all of these different environmental um, things that I was talking about and you're not methylating well, you can absolutely have issues with the degradation of histamine, particularly the central nervous system, and that is going to be contributing to the neurological symptoms of histamine, the headaches, the migraines, the vertigo, issues regulating your body temperature, um, nausea and motion sickness, um, anxiety, insomnia, okay? 
So that's a really, really big deal. The other thing um, is that, as I was saying before, you know, it detoxifies estrogen and, you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of your um, your children, and the, even the young girls might not be menstruating yet. So that might not be an issue, but the issue can come down to dopamine, right? Because the COMPT enzyme also breaks down dopamine. If you're not breaking down your dopamine, you can definitely have issues with mood. Okay. Yeah, the uh, the other thing that histamine uh, that methylation is really big at when it comes to um, the detoxification pathways, it's a big detoxifier of heavy metals and um, mercury. Okay, and a lot of the kids on the spectrum have issues with heavy metals and, and heavy metal detoxification. So methylation is a big pathway in the liver that detoxifies. Our endogenous waste products, including our body's own hormones and neurotransmitters, as well as environmental toxins. So, so you it's it's contributes to issues with the degradation of these toxins and endogenous toxins. But you have to always think, why do I have these toxins in my body in the first place? Why do I have all this histamine in my body in the first place? If the thing with histamine, it, it's going to get from the gut through to the brain, okay? And it's often not an MTHFR or methylation issue that's causing the high histamine. It's usually gut and mould, mould's big deal, and oxalates, mm -hmm. causing all this histamine to build up in the body, get through to the bloodstream, get into the brain. And yes, if you've got methylation problems, you're going to be struggling to break it down in the central nervous system. But the key is don't let it get in there in high amounts in the first place. Yes. So now, our brain makes source. histamine. It's like it's a neurotransmitter. We need it. It's important for learning and, and memory. It's in, it's, it helps you wake you up. Mm. It helps release dopamine and serotonin. It's very mm. important that you don't want it getting too high. Yeah. And, and and when we're really dealing day-to-day -day cases and what we're what we're seeing in how patients is is how stress and um glyphosate, environmental toxins and poor diet is disrupting the microbiome, which will drive that's going to drive problems with histamine yes. mostly. Yes. And so we speaking of histamine, we have a lot of families um in our audience with children with allergies and intolerances. So can you talk about the potential links with these issues and MTHFR mutations? I know you've sort of touched on it already. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So children that have these multiple sort of crazy multiple food intolerances these are the children that you need to first look at homocysteine levels. So I want to touch on this. Homocysteine is involved in methylation, okay? Now, homocysteine is um, involved in methylation because it helps make SAMe, your methyl donor, right? Now, to convert homocysteine into methionine that then creates s methionine, your methyl donor, you need methylfolate and you need methyl B12. So when you have a gene mutation on MTHFR, particularly homozygous C677T, that can really drive up your homocysteine levels in the blood. Now, that's a cardiovascular risk marker, a blood clotting risk marker. It also damages the blood-brain barrier. And that's not good, but you can look at that and think that person is not methylating well because their homocysteine is not rigid into methionine to create SAMe. And, and then you'd be like, oh, what's going on with their MTHFR? Like, are they homozygous C677? Do they need a lot of support with, with folate? You know, do they need to be absorbing their folate, you know, well? Do they need methylfolate? That, that's the big thing with MTHFR is that if that is driving up your, home, your high homocysteine. Yes. Okay. Now, okay, but this is, this is the thing, the big thing. When homocysteine is low, this is where you are seeing a correlation with children with multiple food intol intolerances and allergies. So homocysteine has two roles. It's involved in methylation. It's also a storage molecule for sulfur. Now, sulfur is the second most abundant element in the body. It's essential for the, the 
sulfation pathway, which is a major detoxification pathway, and it also makes glutathione. And glutathione is our body's major antioxidant, and we can't sequester free radicals and get on top top of inflammation without glutathione. So glutathione is made from sulfur, right? So what happens when you've got issues with the um what when what when you if you see that your homocysteine is low, what is happening is your homocysteine is being used, it's being chopped up to get the sulfur to provide the sulfur for what we call the sulfation pathway, to provide the sulfur for the sulfation detoxification pathway and to provide the sulfur to make glutathione. Now, the main cause of that is mold illness and oxalate toxicity. If you've got oxalate toxicity, oxalates will drive histamine in a massive way because oxalates cause huge issues with inflammation okay and that will release a lot of histamine in the body then what happens is oxalates share the same transport carrier as sulfur in the body so what happens is the oxalates jump on the the transport train and there's nowhere for sulfur to go and sulfur gets dumped in the urine then what happens is the gut microbiome can actually start making sulfur put up regulating sulfur producing bacteria Okay, and then sulfation, you've got issues with sulfation, you don't have enough sulfur for sulfation, and sulfation breaks down salicylates. Mm. Right, so we have oxalate intolerance, histamine intolerance, um, sulfur intolerance, salicylate intolerance, on top of gluten and dairy, and this is where you get the crazy multiple food intolerances. Yeah, these kids that don't, don't feel like they don't kind of tolerate anything. Exactly. That mm. that's a mass that's a really important place to start looking. If you have a patient like that or if your children are presenting like that, you need to know what your homocysteine levels are because it's it, when the when food intolerances are that severe, it's not just a gut microbiome problem, it's a biochemistry problem. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you for explaining that. I think that probably would have gone over a lot of our experiences. Yes. I feel like I'm back in uh, back in biochemistry class, <laughs> but it's all coming back. So I just just to rewind because I, I think even some people might not even know what oxalates are. Can you explain a little bit more about that? Because you've mentioned that a few times. Yeah, yeah. So oxalates are sharp little crystals that get made in the gut, um, and they deposit in in the gut. And they deposit in the joint, in the bladder, in the urethra, and in the thyroid as well. They can even get into the brain and they cause continual tissue damage and inflammation. That will drive histamine to be released continuously. Now, the body can make oxalate under duress from a bad gut microbiome. You know, we need a healthy microbiome to break down oxalate. It's part of our biochemistry. We make it. It's real role why we have it is not that well known, but we do have it. We need to be able to break it down. So if people have a lot of dysbiosis, they can't break down the oxalate. But one of really, really the main, one of the main causes of high oxalate is mold toxicity, mold illness, because mold contains oxalate. The aspergillus species contain oxalate. Maybe if some of the other species do, but it contains oxalate. Okay, so if and these and it's so it's not well known. People really don't know about it, and so you can go undiagnosed for years and years, and you're not the oxalates are building up and up and up and up. We also have food, yeah, and what what break what you need to break down oxalate is um, vitamin B six. Okay, and what can happen when your sulfation pathway is running really fast so this pathway you need to get all your sulfur to make glutathione and to support sulfation is is driving down your homocysteine and the enzyme that does that the cbs enzyme is b6 dependent so you that pathway is upregulated it's using all your b6 and you don't have enough b6 to break down your oxalate yeah so it's 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 complicated but you like the signs and symptoms of oxalate are Definitely all your histamine symptoms that are not resolved on a low histamine diet or treating SIBO, right? Um, Bladder pain, urethra pain, um, gut pain, um, joint pain, um, you know, mood issues because it depletes your zinc and your B6 and your iron. 
Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm like with all the, you know, the wet weather in Australia this year, like, like you said, that, that mold's a big trigger for this. Like it, it's probably pretty, yeah, I'm sure you're seeing lots it's, of these. It's unbelievably common, Jessica. So I, I have a mold specialist working with me now, a mold and oxalate specialist working with me, for me now because it's such a specialised area. And once you see mold in your patients, once you understand mold and oxalates, you can't not see it. And I'm referring Mel, you know, Melanie's name, I'm referring her several patients a week mm. because it's mold and oxalate. And it's just so, so common. You know, the, the key thing is, you know, those people that, they come to you and they've got a huge list of bloods. They've seen men and, and all your functional medicine tests, gene tests. They've seen many practitioners and they just never get better. Mm-hmm. They've done SIBO testing. They've done SIBO. They might have had SIBO, SIBO or not. They've done the protocol. It's gone. They're not better. They've treated candida. It's gone. It's not better. They've supported their methylation. It's not better. It's not. Nothing's ever better. The other thing is they don't have, a, you know, if they don't have a, if I'm working with someone just with simple SIBO histamine issues, they come back to me in a couple of weeks and their symptoms aren't improved dramatically in a steady state. If they can't answer my questions, yes, no, this is what's happening. It's all over the place. No consistency. Mm-hmm. That's another big sign. Red flag of, yeah. Okay. Big red flag. Yeah. It's just those, pa- it's those people that don't fit in the box. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's really interesting. So let's, let's also talk, well, I want, I want to ask you a question also about, um, you know, kids that are on the spectrum and kids with mood disorders, which we, which are quite common in our audience as well. What are the links with these kinds of, um, challenges in kids and imbalances in kids and the MTHFR gene mutation? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if, if, the, what what we now know about children on the spectrum autism is that a lot of them have a MTHFR gene mutation. Like the database, I think what's that like? Amy Yasko has a database of um, autistic children, and the majority of them are in, had to have a mutation on MTHFR. So that can cause massive issues with detoxification. Okay, but the other key thing we now know about. Um, children on the spectrum is that they will have low homocysteine right and what is driving down their homocysteine is um oxalates candida what what this is interesting and melanie taught me this the other day we used to always think that candida contained oxalate but what what the research now suggests is that it's the other way around the body starts to make candida when there's oxalates I don't know why it's some protective mechanism. It's not. It's not helpful for the person, but it, it will. It can do that, right? So, it's. Um, so what happens is that when there's issues with mold, oxalates, heavy metals, and massive issues with this sulfation pathway, which is the pathway that's really dysregulated with kids on the spectrum, is that not only are you having issues with sulfation and and the deto- the sulfation detoxification pathway and glutathione synthesis because your homocysteine drops so low you simply don't have enough homocysteine to make your sami right so the mthfr it's there's it's like so mthfr is sitting there it's like i've got my methylfolate but but where's my homocysteine mm-hmm. it's missing it's, an ingredient so it's missing it's it's missing ingredient. Yeah. So it really is um the big issues with both the sulfation pathway and the methylation pathway that is going to be what we see in children on the spectrum autism mood disorders. Okay. So my my tip about that is you absolutely need to start with your homocysteine levels and do an organic acids test to look for oxalate and mold they have the aspergillus mold marker in the organic acids test which is a really good place to start um and then it's like you can take all the methylfolate you like if if you're just focusing on an mthfr gene mutation and you don't know what your homocysteine is doing you're doing yourself a disservice because you can take all the methylfolate you like but if you don't have enough homocysteine it's not it's not going to be used it's not going to be doing what it's supposed to do 
which is create SAMe for methylation. So it's environment, just it's always environment. When it's not gene mutations, environment, it's epigenetics. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Looking at that complete picture again, and you've mentioned SAMe a couple of times as well. Can you explain what SAMe is to our listeners? Yeah. Yeah. So SAMe is S adenosylmethionine, and what it's made it's made from you need methylfolate you need methyl b12 and you need methionine you need to eat the, the amino acids to make your sami right and sami is the body's major methyl donor so it goes around the body and it donates all these methyl groups out right to all these methyl transferase enzymes that you need to for your body to run okay and that's what methylation does. So it, it, it breaks down histamine, it breaks down adrenaline, it breaks down um, estrogen. It's involved in the conversion of serotonin to melatonin. So that's sleep. It's involved in the synthesis of phosphatal, phospholipids. Phospholipids make your cell membranes. This is people just sort of glaze over when I talk about this in clinic, but cell membranes, having healthy cell membranes is of vital yes right I mean, so you, all your, all your, yeah all your receptor sites will sit on you know, they need to be healthy robust mm. cells it helps make bile acids mm. yeah so it does it does a lot of important things that's what sammy does okay um you can supplement with sammy um you know i do use it a lot in clinic um but it, it need it, re- it really needs to be done under the supervision of a trained practitioner because if you take sammy particularly if you take SAMe when your histamines are too high, it, it sounds like it'd be great because it breaks histamine down. But if you're not addressing the real cause of why you got histamine in the first place, it can come out as an adverse reaction. Yeah. It can come out as a headache, migraine, anxiety, disability, insomnia. Yeah. So you've got to get your histamines down first. So you've got to look at what's causing your high histamine, mold, oxalate, SIBO, estrogen, you know, gluten intolerance, the major cause of high histamine. You've got to get to the root cause of it first and then bring it down and then SAMe can be really, really helpful. There's nothing like SAMe when you need it because not only does it break down histamine in, for, for mood, so high histamine causes irritability, depression, anxiety, right? So it, SAMe will break down histamine, but it also supports the production of dopamine and serotonin. So so when it's needed, there's nothing like SAMe. It, it's a game-changing supplement when it's the right supplement. Yes, definitely. Okay, thank you for explaining that. Um, And I know like women's hormones are a specialty area of yours. So can you share why women with MTHFR mutations are more likely to experience problems with hormone imbalances? Yeah. So, you know, MTHFR is really important. And so MTHFR and your methylfolate is really important for making SAMe, which is the cofactor for COMT. So it's catechol methyltransferase enzyme. So that enzyme, being a methyltransferase, needs a methyl group. And if you've got MTHFR and you you don't have enough methylfolate, then you have potentials with not having enough SAMe, the cofactor that you need for this enzyme. So cofactors are like on-off switches, right? And it will switch on the COMT enzyme and will allow your detoxification pathway to to move better okay now the, there is this so what so if you've got issues with um comp you estrogen dominance right so you get breast tenderness pms mood swings um bloating and fluid retention heavy periods but then this this is a massive link jess it's so profound and i can't believe it wasn't well known before and it's in most women especially perimenopause the link between histamine and estrogen is profound, mm. right? Yeah, this estrogen, is really just coming to light, like fairly recently, really, in yeah. the scheme of things, right? But when you see it, you can't unsee it, mm. right? So what, what you know, estrogen, if you've got issues with MTHFR and COMP and you can't break down your estrogen properly, detoxify it properly, it builds up estrogen that stimulates mast cells to release histamine. Histamine, one of histamine's role in the body is to actually um, stimulate the ovaries to produce estrogen. It's meant to, but when it's too high, you'll produce more, um, too much estrogen. And then that goes on to create more histamine. So 
So it's very histamine, estrogen, histamine, estrogen. Okay. So PMS, um, headaches, migraines, anxiety, like it, and, and in that perimenopause phase, when your estrogen is like three times higher than your progesterone, that 99% of women will have, his, for the first time, histamine issues, hives, eczema, all of these symptoms. They're very, you know, so anxiety can be multifactorial, but high hives, yeah, histamine. It's a clear, it's a clear histamine link, isn't it? Yeah. So, so going back to MTHFR, if you've got MTHFR issues, can't break down your estrogen effectively and you can't break down your histamine effectively in the central nervous system and that, yeah. So what, where Sammy, where I find Sammy shine clinically with women is for PMS and premenstrual dysphoric disorder that's driven from histamine and estrogen. So women that are getting ovulation issues, ovulation headaches, migraines, nausea, dizziness, insomnia, mood swings, that is classic high estrogen, right, and high high histamine. So if you work on gut and, you know, you got to go work on the gut and get your, poop your estrogen out and make sure you're not deconjugating your estrogen, get your methylation working, detoxify estrogen, get it down, and then what can really help just lift women is SAMI. It can really, really help just break down histamine, break down um, estrogen and support dopamine and, and serotonin. It's really good for PMS and PMDD, Sammy. Yeah, yeah. That's, so that's a great little tip for any mums out there that are experiencing that like perimenopause stage of life, but also that, you know, those PMS symptoms. But again, really important to work with a practitioner to figure out, you know, not yeah, it's not just to take this to, you know, that sort of more medical approach we want to be really addressing the root cause and yeah just i just want to say methyls methylfolate methyl b12 and sami can absolutely cause adverse reactions serious adverse reactions anxiety depression etc you just you you just need to go and see someone that knows what they're doing and be guided you know like i often don't prescribe methyls in my clinic i'll get absorption going i'll make sure people are eating folate they have pancreatic enzymes in place. They fix their SIBO. They absorb their folate properly. They get their B12 levels up. They need hydrochloric acid. These things will allow you to methylate well. There's no point in just giving methyls without fixing all everything else the because like you'll, you'll, sort of, you'll feel good and then you'll feel bad and then you'll feel good and you'll feel bad and you don't know what's up or down and that's clinically not very helpful. No, no, that's right. So can you tell our listeners more about where they can where they can find out more about you and you know how you can help? Yeah. So my website is simply joannekennedy.com.au. Um I I have um a few practitioners work for me that well basically my clinic is really focused on histamine intolerance and all the drivers of histamine intolerance, including MTHFR. Okay, so I see, I treat a lot of SIBO, gut issues, hormones, women's hormones. I'm really good at that. I have a specialist working with me, Melanie, who does oxalates and mold illness and children because she had mold illness and oxalate and she has children. So she's perfect for that, right? So that's all on my website. And I have written an ebook. It's like a 95 page ebook on histamine intolerance, like all the causes, treatment strategies, testing that you can do. And there's a video masterclass and that's like an e-bundle and that's also available on my website. Um, and I've got an Instagram page, which I do um, when I get around to it, um, lots of videos and reels and there's lots of carousel posts, like information posts. And that's simply Joanne Kennedy, Naturopath. Okay, we'll make sure that we pop the links to those in the show notes so people don't have to remember. They can find those links easily. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing your wisdom. You obviously know what you're talking about in this area and it's just been, yeah, really great um, to have your insight. So thank you. Right, Jessica, thanks so much for having me. Welcome to the Natural Super Kids Podcast where you will discover practical strategies to inspire you to boost the health and nutrition of your kids. I'm Jessica Donovan, a qualified naturopath specializing in kids' health, and I want to make it as easy as possible for you to raise healthy and happy kids. Let's get into it.